So I'm digging around this pile of core engines, transmissions, compressed natural gas tanks, and every other thing that I keep piled up in here because I'm too lazy to throw it away. And I thought now would be a great time to talk about the 3.5 EcoBoost. Mainly how people don't seem to know the difference between the old EcoBoost and the new EcoBoost. So this right here is the old one. Now you can tell this 3.5 is from an F-150 built after 2011 by this vacuum pump on this camshaft right here. There are a couple of systems on your vehicle like your brake booster and your four-wheel drive actuators that use vacuum assist to operate. Vacuum assist is exactly what it sounds like. Your car uses vacuum to help you push your brake pedal down. This thing right here is called the brake booster. This is basically a large servo and the negative pressure inside of this right here helps suck this large diaphragm out this this way, pushing this rod forward and applying your brake for you. The EcoBoost is a turbocharged engine. That means it uses this turbine to force more air into the engine. The more air your engine gets, the more oxygen your engine gets. And since your engine burns a mixture of fuel and oxygen, the more power you ultimately have. Now most of the time your engine creates its own vacuum. When the piston goes down, it draws air into the combustion chamber from the intake manifold. And that's the vacuum your car is designed to use for systems like the brake booster and the four-wheel drive actuators. But as you probably guess, your intake manifold doesn't really maintain consistent negative pressure with the turbocharger force feeding the engine air. Hence the vacuum pump. When the butterfly is closed and the turbos aren't active, the engine is creating vacuum and the newer EcoBoost is able to harness that vacuum with a clever storage system. But since the turbos are electronically actuated, the PCM can regulate the vacuum by temporarily disabling the turbochargers. The old EcoBoost turbos were vacuum actuated. They were sort of archaic and really couldn't be trusted with something as important as your brakes. Companies like General Motors would have gotten around this by using hydraulic pressure from the power steering pump to power the brakes. But Ford really wanted vacuum for some reason. In 2011, when the first EcoBoost pickups came out, they used an electronic compressor mounted behind the headlight to make vacuum. After 2012, you had the vacuum pump on the camshaft. Then the new EcoBoost came around in 2015, and it does not have a vacuum pump again. That's really only the first difference, and we're 2 minutes and 30 seconds into this video. The next difference is the old EcoBoost was a bucket engine. That means underneath of those cam lobes is this shiny thing right here I call a bucket. That bucket sits directly on top of the valve, and when the cam lobe comes around, it slides across that bucket and forces it down, opening the valve. It's a really simple system, but man, it was noisy, and it was a real pain in the ass when it came time to rebuild these. You had to measure the clearance between the valve stem and the camshaft and order a bucket the exact size to fit between the two. It was really difficult. It also had a lot of drag. The cam lobe didn't have a great deal of leverage when it came around and slid across this thing, so it took more horsepower to run that system. The new EcoBoost uses a roller rocker setup, something we're all more familiar with. This end of the rocker arm sits on top of the valve, and this end right here sits on top of this lash adjuster, or lifter. The lifter keeps this roller tight against the camshaft. When the cam comes around, it uses that leverage to push down on the valve. This reduces drag greatly. I think they gained another 20 horse by using this system. There are a few other changes to the valve train and the timing chain that make this engine a lot more reliable and more powerful, but all of that's sort of boring and we really don't need to talk about it. The next thing to talk about are the turbos themselves. These turbos are electronically actuated and not vacuum actuated. That means the PCM can actually run these through a self-test cycle. If your engine's been idling a long time, instead of having your wastegates get carboned up and then stick, your engine will just run it through a couple of cycles, a full range, so that it doesn't carbon up and get stuck. That makes these turbos many times more reliable. They're bigger too. There are improvements to the intake manifold, it's smarter, the mapping's better, and it's got bigger ports, which ultimately adds more power, that's nice. It's got better coils, which the old ones weren't bad, but these ones are better. It also has a bigger high pressure fuel pump, which gasoline fuel injection does suck but at least they added power with this one right here.
So although the EcoBoost is a bit more complicated than, say, a Briggs & Stratton, Ford is the only company that's actually improved their flagship engine over the years instead of absolutely destroying it. Like that time General Motors had that really good engine called the LS, but then they gave it active fuel management and variable valve timing and totally ruined it. And then they gave it direct injection and started calling it an LT like we wouldn't know. Or that time Chrysler had that good engine called the Hemi, which really was a good engine, but then they gave it variable valve timing and AFM. Actually, they called it MDS, but either way, they totally ruined the engine forever. I got one of those right there. Camshaft, obviously. But this EcoBoost is on the floor in here because the truck lived and the engine died. And this EcoBoost is on the floor in here because the engine lived and the truck died, if that says anything about them at all.